I have always felt that there are two schools of design that developers subscribe to when designing a game. A balance that has to be decided upon right at the initial concept outlining in production. Is this game a puzzle box where players must overcome a selection of challenges designed to test skill or daring? Or is it an adventure where players embody their avatar and go on fantastical journeys? And these two facets are by no means exclusive. In fact, most games must straddle both of these themes, but few developers have so competently explored them from both angles as Naughty Dog. And whilst everyone praises later efforts for pushing for seamless integration between emotional storytelling and riveting gameplay, the turning point and the gear shift where this journey began was in 2001 when they released Jack and Dexter, The Precursor Legacy. The game was conceptualised in 1999, when Naughty Dog began looking forwards to life after Crash Bandicoot. With a new console generation, the PlayStation 2, they felt they had to come up with someone unique. Jack was designed to appeal to an international market, melding Western and Eastern sensibilities to produce something brand new. Having meddled with cutscene driven gameplay through their recent game, Naughty Dog invested in hiring animators to bring their world to life, and they recruited not from the traditional video game industry sources, but from entertainment companies such as Nickelodeon and Disney. As a result, whilst this hodgepodge merging of ideas suffers from being difficult to define, it is wonderfully unique and certainly brilliantly animated. Daxter is fully voiced and well produced. He's a brilliant character, brought to life by Max Casella, who fulfills three important roles. Jack was designed as a silent video game protagonist, a design trope common at the time. However, as Naughty Dog wanted to tell a game with an immersive story, the player needed to respond to mission requests from non-player characters throughout the game world. So as you walk around and bump into an interesting looking character, you can approach them and learn about their plight, and Daxter will interact with them on your behalf. He's an abrasive personality, but there is a lot to love in his humour. Secondly, throughout the game, Daxter will comment when you arrive in new areas, fight new enemies, or complete objectives. It's nice to hear someone else praise you for your feats of accomplishment. It prevents Jack from seeming as egotistical as many other game characters, as he's not constantly self-aggrandizing. But thirdly, and the design choice that will either delight or make players despair, depending on their skill level, is Daxter's admonishments on player death. Every time you die, Daxter will lean over Jack's prone body and deliver a short one-liner pun. I loved this. Max Casella really sells this performance and is clearly having fun, and it shows just how immersive Naughty Dog wanted this game to be. However, Anyone who dies repeatedly will be subjected to these brief, obtrusive interludes from Daxter every single time. Round after round, death after death. And there are sections, not many but a few, in this game that will sorely test player's skill. It's the traditional combination of early three-dimensional platformer design, where loose controls, tight level design, and a roaming camera can occasionally conspire together to ruin a player's day. However, I have to admit that on the whole, Jack controls brilliantly. The design mechanics are entirely original and a little unique. He has a strong grasp of momentum throughout most of his actions, such as rolling, spinning or jumping, but the aspects that elevate Jack over the progenitors Crash and Mario are the colour-based eco-special powers. Throughout the game, the player can gain temporary boosts to either leap impossibly high, shoot projectiles and clear enemies at distance, or run at incredible speeds. This allowed Naughty Dog to prepare some amazing situational puzzles, where one, or a combination, of special powers need to be utilised in specific ways to reach hidden items, because Jack and Daxter, the precursor legacy, is secretly a 3D collectathon. It hides it well. The game has a minimal amount of backtracking and most of the hidden items are dotted along a linear path. But the goal here is not just to get to the far side of the world and bring down the final boss, but to do it whilst collecting 2000 precursor orbs and 101 power cells. 
However, the world is very cleverly designed, with several distinct hub areas, leading the player to smaller subsections that often follow a linear loop. Each area has a very unique vibe and collectively describe Jack and Dactor's adventure via in-game world building. As the player gets closer to Gollum Meyer Citadel, they find more and more intrusive evidence of ancient precursor technology and the seeping quagmire of Dark Eco that is spreading out and infecting the world. Via incidental game design, the players destroy a contaminated plant in the Forbidden Jungle, uncover an underwater eco citadel outside the rock village, and save a kidnapped sages from Golemire's citadel itself. The entire world can be traversed with no loading screens, making it one of the earliest examples of a fully open 3D world with player boundaries masked behind natural hazards. It wasn't the first game to attempt this, but the power of the PlayStation 2 meant that it was more open, varied, and engaging than anything that came before it. Setting, immersion, the feel of adventure were prized highly in this game, and it set a template for Naughty Dog's journey over the next two decades. Although many players were sad to see that the unique world that this game shows off so masterfully was torn up and replaced with sequels. However, that was probably necessary, as whilst the Precursor Legacy sold well, there were complaints from critics unsure how the game was supposed to be received. Future titles would get progressively darker and more emo, as the trend throughout the early 2000s was inescapable. However, revisiting the original Jack game, it is a delight to rediscover the charm and love put into crafting this world. Through the initial three PlayStation consoles, they created a trilogy of games for each platform that would perfectly sum up and represent the strengths of that console. But whilst PlayStation 1 mascot Crash Bandicoot was an instant worldwide phenomenon thanks to the purity of his approach to three-dimensional platforming, and emblematically was the avatar of Sony overtaking Sega as Nintendo's main rival, and the PlayStation 3 franchise Uncharted would become the template for perfect blockbuster action-adventure games and arguably the most important console exclusive in Sony's arsenal through troubling times. I personally think that Naughty Dog's submission to the PlayStation 2, still the best-selling video game console of all time, is the most interesting. Yet this really is the least discussed series from Naughty Dog's repertoire. However, given the success they've had with narrative-driven adventures, I somehow doubt that the team will ever look back to this era and come back. And that is a shame.